This video will be part 2 of how to attack bombers. If you wanted to watch part 1 covering the stern and side approaches, you can see that video there. So this video will be covering the overhead approaches and the head-on approach, which will be found in that document on the right provided by Sundowner. And if you wanted to download it, it's available in the video description. The first attack we're going to do is an overhead approach while on the same course as the target. And our initial position is going to be the same as the previous approaches, but the difference with this is that we have an altitude advantage of around two to 4,000 feet. So once we're around 30 to 40 degrees in front of the target, we'll initiate a nose high climbing turn back towards it. And as we climb, we're initiating a roll very slowly. We're trying to end up putting ourselves in a position that allows us to intercept the bomber's line of flight and come in attacking from above and behind. And as we come down, maintain sight by pulling lead just above the nose, and then fire when the angle off is right. And then you can either break off under the target or off to the side. For the overhead approach, you're going to arrive at your desired angle off, diving on the target inside a 1200 feet range. Starting position is going to be parallel to the target, 2,000 to 4,000 feet above it, and one mile to the side. You enter the nose high turn towards the target and roll inverted while maintaining sight and pulling down in line with the target's line of flight. You then hold lead pursuit while keeping sight and you fire when the angle off is right and then break off. An error could be if you're using lag pursuit, this will end up flattening the approach, or if you pull excess lead and lose sight, it's safest to break off the attack. So here we're going to look at an example of using lag pursuit instead of lead pursuit while doing an overhead approach. So entry is the same, initiate that nose high climbing turn and roll towards the target. Continue the roll so it will intercept the line of flight. But as we come down, instead of holding that lead pursuit, you're going to have the bomber in front of the gun sight and have it in lag pursuit. As you reach firing range, this results in a zero lead deflection shot which can make it easier for the gunners to hit you as well. This error is going to show why you want the extra altitude involved. You can do this attack from the same altitude as the target, but the issue is you're not having that altitude advantage, so you don't have the excess energy to trade for airspeed in the pass. So even though we can roll and get ourselves to inverted, and we can still intercept the target's flight path, but due to the lack of altitude difference, we don't really gain much airspeed in the dive, so we don't have a lot of closure, which means that we can't really escape the guns of the bomber very well when we do make our attack. So in this example we're going to be attacking uh, while the target is flying towards us instead of us flying parallel with it. So this is going to be something where you have a fair bit of closure to deal with. And you can adapt this attack for any position against the target as long as you're not too far away from it laterally. As the target starts approaching us, he's going to be getting close to disappearing under that leading edge of the wing. So as we initiate a climb and roll, we're just going to roll and maintain sight as best as we can intercept the target's line of flight and begin our pull down from above and behind it and initiate that steep dive. And just like before we hold the lead pursuit by maintaining sight, fire when the angle off is right, and you can push forward on the stick and break away underneath the target. So even though the firing window is very short, it can actually be very effective as you see here. When performing the overhead approach from an opposite course to the target, you're going to arrive at your desired angle off, diving on the target inside of that 1200 feet range, just like usual. Your starting position is going to be in front of the target's wing line, 2000 feet to 4000 feet above it, and no more than one mile separation when you initiate the attack. The plan is going to be to enter that nose side turn towards the target and roll inverted, maintaining the sight and pulling down in line with the target's flight path, holding that lead pursuit while keeping sight, and then firing when the angle off is right. You can make the same errors with this one as you can with the previous approach attacking from the same course. However, because you can adapt this attack to attack from any kind of position in front of the target's wing line, it's important to be able to get in position with no more than that one mile separation in order to allow you to intercept the target's flight path effectively before making your attack. So this example we're going to be doing a head-on approach using a snapshot technique. Uh, so this means we're only going to be firing for a very small period of time. 
and because this is a head-on approach uh, there's going to be a lot of closure involved so you need to have more distance away from the target so ideally you'll have at least two miles in front of the target this way when you turn back around and um, fly towards them we have plenty of time to line up this looks about right so we can begin our turn towards them now Now as we start rolling out of the turn here, we have a look at the direction of the bomber. We're not perfectly lined up on his heading. This means we're just going to aim towards a point in space where he's flying. Begin firing, let him pass through the board stream. Then we can nose over and get out of range. When attacking from the head-on position, I always like to either aim for an engine or the cockpit. This way you can definitely put the aircraft out of commission. So here in the attack view, um, we can see that as I make this turn, I may have had a little bit too much distance laterally. So instead of intercepting the bomb's flight path directly, I kind of end up offset to the side. Um, but it's easily adjusted for, so this way you can just point at the area where the airplane's going to be flying to and fire. This way you end up with at least a snapshot to hit the target. So here we're going to do a head-on attack again, but this time it's going to be from directly in front of the target. So this means that considering closure is going to be especially important. So with the Spitfire doing 260 miles an hour and the bomber doing about 190, the total closure is going to be 450 miles per hour between the airplanes. So the distance is going to be closing at 660 feet per second. And if I begin firing at 2,000 feet away, I'm going to get a 2 to 3 second firing window. And as we're turning towards the bomber here, we're adjusting the turn slightly, so this way we can finish our turn on the opposite heading directly in front of the bomber. This way we have a zero lead deflection shot. Now as I roll out here, I'm going to put the nose of the bomber in the center of the gun sight, fire at about twice my usual range, and then break away before I reach him. And then we can see the damage we did passing around the other side. Personally, when I'm attacking bombers, this is my favorite kind of technique. Um, simply because you're able to attack the cockpit directly without any sort of protection um, afforded to the pilot from the front. For head-on approaches, you want to arrive at nearly 180 degrees angle off, firing on the target by 2,000 feet away. You'll be at least 2 miles ahead and 500 feet above or below the target, with no more than 1 mile lateral separation. As you initiate that turn towards the target, you need to adjust it slightly to intercept its flight path, and then when you do, you keep your crosshair on the target's nose, firing at 2,000 feet away and breaking away by 600 feet. If you begin too close laterally, this will require a lot of g-force to intercept the flight path, and this may cause you to black out. And because you have such high closure, it's easy to get target fixated, which could end up making you collide with them. So here we can see in this head-on approach, there's a lot of g pulled here initially, which almost causes us to black out. Uh, so we end up rolling out here, lining up, putting the bomber in the middle of the crosshair. We'll start firing at 2,000 meters away, but now we get target fixated, and we just continue firing and firing, and there's not enough time to pull out and end up colliding. They complete this tutorial on attacking bombers, so don't forget to become a subscriber using that notifications icon. I've also got a Patreon if you wanted to check out these videos in early access, as well as a uh, new Twitch channel. The links are below. Until next time, remember to always fly safe and check your six.